Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason, and first of all, before we get started, I gotta go feed some chickens, give them a little bit of feed. They're, they they like to eat. What's going on, kids? Huh? What, you like to eat? What's your problem, huh? How you girls doing, huh? Look at you. You gonna be a star, Layla? Yeah. There we go. Come on, kids. They know when you put food in there. Hey, kids. Hey there. You girls doing all right? Huh? Yeah. That's the thing about chickens. Even if they're not laying a ton of eggs, they still want to eat. <laughs> so, <laughs> gotta make sure that they're well fed. Uh, you can see where the uh, those our, our new pullets, our, our young chickens, are they're looking good. They're trying to get adapted, but they're at least roosting every night and in there with them. Still skittish of the older ones, but that's not really the point of this video. It just happens to be what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but uh, honestly, you know, sometimes you just get behind. There's less daylight hours. There's less time for you to do outdoor activities in general. But like, you still want to do this stuff, right? <laughs> so we're behind on doing some things. But the weather looks so good that I do believe we've got time to try to get some greens and some other things growing that we haven't got planted yet. Here's the uh, Chinese cabbage, the Merlot Chinese cabbage that we planted. It is growing. It's doing all right. There's some other cabbage we planted. Now, it's just all experimental, just trying something. It's, it's starting to try and grow. That's obviously just throwing seeds in the ground, seeing what happens, uh, seeing how long you can make it last, seeing what happens with it. If we don't get nothing out for us, chickens will at least eat it, right? So it's, that's all that is, but it's trying. And the weather, again, the weather's looking decent. Here's all these peas that we planted, and they're looking really good. They're growing pretty quick. Uh, these, these were green arrow there, there, and here. I think these are called Lillian's case load here, here, and here. Peas like the cooler weather. And so if we can keep it, <laughs> keep it, you know, above freezing, but but not too hot we might be able to get something there we'll see what happens with those if we get anything at all i'll be happy because it's so difficult here to grow peas uh just because they don't like the extreme heat but they get that they need to above freezing right so in ohio southwest ohio here it just gets a little weird that we don't have that good fall weather or good spring weather a lot of times a lot of times it's more extremes and so it's it's tougher to grow cool weather stuff but we might have a shot. We're going to see how, how this goes. But today, we're going to try to do some more planting. We're at the spot where these beans are done, that squash is done, those beans right here are done, right? So, what? Squash here, beans here, and beans here. They're all finished, cleared out, beds are done. You've seen those grow bags there that we use for those peas. We have several more of those grow bags that had regular potatoes and sweet potatoes in them. You guys seen those harvest videos if you haven't check them out but um because we did pretty solid but we had we had soil and grow bags so essentially we got open land we have land usable to plant stuff in and here you see that this uh ragged jack kale is doing all right it's growing up pretty good in this green stalk it's good it's good for growing greens it's doing pretty solid while it's doing good we are gonna have to get it covered because cabbage moths are still around and they will lay their eggs and we'll get cabbage worms on any kind of brassicas really quickly and they'll be gone. So I need to get an insect cover for that. Um, or just some kind of bug netting. Whatever whatever it may, it may need, we got to put something over if we want to get any kale at all. Or any cabbage as far as that goes. But while we hit this time, we got, hey look, we got time, we got open space. We need to get this stuff done and just throw seeds in the dirt. Just get seeds sprouted. That's all you got to do. And so that's what we're doing today. So now, as we've said before, we're big time believers in not wasting our space and not wasting our time or the seeds that we bought, by the way. So we have all this soil here that came from um, the, the sweet potatoes that we harvested. Again, you can watch, you should go back and watch that video. It's a pretty good harvest. Um, so we have all that dirt, all that soil that we have there, and we have some time. So we got a couple kinds of spinach we're going to plant. So now, a lot of people don't fall garden. Maybe they don't, they don't really have time or whatever. Um, I do want to ask this question though, like if you grow food, uh, why do you grow food? I think it's important for us to ask these questions. You know, ask yourself that question, answer it um, the best you possibly can, and just see, just see, um, you know, what what do you, what your answer is. Be honest with yourself, right? Because like if I were going to ask myself, 
you know, why do we grow food? You know, why am I, why am I out here planting spinach at seven o'clock in the evening um, when I should just be chilling, right? Why do I, <laughs> why do I plant, or why do I uh, keep feeding chickens that aren't laying eggs this time of year? Why do we have, why do we do all this? Why in the world am I painting myself by planting individual seeds of spinach? Yeah, what? You know, do I really believe in it that much? The answer is yes, I do. And uh, the also answer is also that I think and love it. Um, I just love it. Angela and I enjoy this, and we. It's, so it's a hobby. So is it a hobby for you? Right. That's a good question. Is it? Um, do you believe in food independence? Okay. That's a. There, are you concerned about your food uh, sources? Necessarily, we're not necessarily concerned. We're going to go hungry. But we do want to take control of our own food, most possibly can. And I mean, so you plant gardens in the summer, right? You plant a garden in the summer, why? Because you enjoy it. Because you can grow food then. And because you want to grow your own food. Well, you can grow your own food in the fall and even in the winter as well. Um, so we just, we keep planting. You know, that's that's why we do it for. I mean, if you don't, if you don't necessarily care, if you're okay with going and buying your own spinach, if you're okay with going and buying your own lettuce, you know all these things if you're okay with that then go ahead that's fine but like we just that's that's why we do this you know it's it's part of who we are it's in our dna it's what we enjoy and so we're gonna keep doing it like i i'm feeding chickens and not getting eggs out of them because i, I enjoy chickens first of all but like again i i love them and but like i also want that fresh food <laughs> i want to have that food source right and it's just always it's sometimes it takes that that works sometimes it takes the effort sometimes you have to keep keep trying and uh planting spinach at seven o'clock on in the middle of september because i like fresh spinach <laughs> but this is a this variety is called the again gigante is it the gigante Nope, that's not a gigante. This one, this is Bloomsdale Longstanding Spinach then, and we're gonna plant it really good in this in these in these grow bags, and hopefully have some spinach here soon. And while I'm finishing planting that spinach and and something else, um, Angela Cade's up here in these uh, raised beds we have on the patio, and she's planting a couple things. That one thing we've grown before, one thing we've never actually successfully grown before. I'm just trying to see if we can. One thing we're planting is this kohlrabi and this one is one from Haas it's supposed to be really quick quicker than any other so we definitely want to try it we've heard a lot of good things about kohlrabi so and we're also going to do that one purple vienna yeah that looks pretty, pretty cool purple purple uh, produce right yeah and then... and then this is one we've done before we've done watermelon radishes before I absolutely love them, especially once they were frosted on. Actually, they even got a little snow on them. They did. And they were super sweet because they had that snow on them. They got super sweet. We're going to plant them up here because it's much easier to maintain, yeah. especially when it starts getting cold. So I'm just dropping like one or two seeds. These are very tiny, so I'm just out thin. Yeah. But you want to make sure that you have enough seeds to germinate. So I'm just kind of dropping them, pushing them in. You don't want to push them too deep. Just push them a little bit in because they don't need, they don't really need to be buried too deep. They look a lot like cabbage seeds. And while she's finishing that up, we're going to go down here and we got a green stalk available. So we're going to plant a little lettuce in that. Again, we just keep planting, right? All we, all we can do is try. Now, this is a marvel of four seasons lettuce, so it should be good anytime, winter, summer, spring, fall, right? So we're gonna try it now. I've, one thing that I'm doing, I'll tell you something right now, when we're planting these greens seeds, spinach, kale, what Angela's planting up here, this lettuce, we're soaking this soil down first, really heavily. If your soil is dry, um, it's, and you put the seeds in it, it's really easy to wash your seeds down when you're trying to when you're trying to um, to get them to, to get them to germinate, right? Because you got they need water because they got to rehydrate. So if your soil is dry beneath them, they're kind of gonna slide right down in that soil because the potting mix is so light. And 
if your soil is pre pre soaked i mean just drench the heck, heck out of it just blast it full of water and when you think it's too much keep going so if your soil below it is already moist it's a lot more difficult for them to wash down in it you see here i got this little bit of uh, lettuce seeds in my hand we're going to be very gentle and just kind of sprinkling down in just a little bit right kind of like that just a few seeds very lightly and very lightly there not much at all see that brilliant camera work that's called shoving the the, the stick thing underneath your arm and trying to do it with two hands not very easy but we're just gonna, <laughs> so we're just gonna um we're just gonna lightly sprinkle those like that i'm gonna take some some fresh soil and lightly coat it okay because lettuce seeds don't have to be covered very much just a little bit and we just sprinkle them thin the, that can that lettuce can head up but also you can use it for uh cut and come again or baby greens and so that's all we're gonna do right now for them we're not trying to get uh, massive heads of lettuce out of this we're just trying to get some lettuce growing and we'll plant this whole green stalk full so there it is thanks for watching we do appreciate it again why do you plant right that that's the point this all this stuff right here why do you why do you why do you keep doing this why do you plant answer those questions honestly with yourself and if it's because you believe in it because you know you enjoy it because you know it's healthier for you all these things then hey don't then don't stop planting again plant some lettuce plant some spinach plant some kale those things are very beneficial and they can grow in cool weather and honestly they can overwinter in a lot of places too so so basically what that means when they overwinter they go dormant and then come spring late maybe late winter they start growing again so thank you guys so much for watching I do appreciate it. my name is jason and it's angelo k this is art of creation homestead we love y'all god bless you and goodbye